Hey everyone, this lesson is on causes of hypercoagulability. More specifically, we're going to go over a systematic method to approaching a case of hypercoagulability and how we can remember causes of hypercoagulability. In the event of a thrombotic event, so a thrombotic event could be anything. It can be a deep vein thrombosis or a pulmonary embolism or some other thrombus in a different area in the body. When we approach a thrombotic event, we have to think about Virchow's triad. Virchow's triad has three components. The first one is endothelial injury. The second one is venous stasis. So we can think of issues with immobility. So this is why immobility can cause deep vein thrombi and even pulmonary emboli. But the topic of this lesson is hypercoagulability. So how do we approach hypercoagulability? So I'm going to talk about the other components of Virchow's triad in another lesson. This lesson is mainly focused on hypercoagulability. So what is hypercoagulability? It's essentially the coagulation cascade in overdrive. It causes increased fibrin clots where they're not supposed to happen. So how do we approach this? There's a mnemonic that I'm going to talk to you about that can help us remember causes of hypercoagulability, and that is the mnemonic calm apes. So calm apes is how we're going to approach causes of hypercoagulability. And it's really calm apes. H, we can think of it as silent to help make the mnemonic work. Calm apes with a silent H. So what do all of these stand for? So this is a mnemonic device or a tool to help us remember the causes of hypercoagulability. So the first one, so you can think of calm ape. The first one is protein C deficiency. So the C in calm means protein C deficiency. The A stands for antiphospholipid antibody syndrome. The L stands for factor V Leiden, Leiden. The M stands for malignancy. The H's stand for HIT or heparin induced thrombocytopenia or the other H homocystinemia. And the A stands for antithrombin. So you can think either of the A's antiphospholipid antibody syndrome or antithrombin deficiency. The P stands for prothrombin G2210A, or for P, you can also think of paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. We're going to talk about what that is a little later as well. The E stands for elevated eighth factor, so increased factor eight. That's what the E stands for, elevated eighth factor in the coagulation cascade. And the S stands for protein S deficiency, and the S also stands for sticky platelet syndrome. So these are the category of causes of hypercoagulability. So remember that endothelial injury and venous stasis can also lead to clots and deep vein thrombosis. But with regards to hypercoagulability, these are the causes you want to think about. So again, protein C deficiency, antiphospholipid antibody syndrome, factor V Leiden, malignancy, HIT or heparin induced thrombocytopenia, homocystinemia, prothrombin G20210A and paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, elevated eighth factor, so increased factor eight, and protein S deficiency and sticky platelet syndrome. So these are the category of causes for hypercoagulability in veins and arteries. We'll talk a bit more about the specific causes of arterial thrombi in the next couple of slides as well. So to delve in a bit more into what each of these are, protein C deficiency is important because of the following. So the liver makes factors 2, 7, 9, and 10 for the coagulation cascade, but it also makes protein S and protein C. And protein C is an inhibitor of both activated factor 5 and activated factor 8. So if we have a deficiency of protein C, we are unable to inhibit activated factor 5 and activated factor 8 of the coagulation cascade. This is the reason why a protein C deficiency can increase the coagulation cascade and increase hypercoagulation. The next cause is antiphospholipid antibody syndrome. The issue here is that there is lupus anticoagulant and anticardiolipin antibody. So the lupus anticoagulant is a misnomer. It is an anticoagulant in vitro, but in vivo it is a coagulant. It increases coagulation. So lupus anticoagulant and anticardiolipin antibody both increase coagulation as well. Factor V Leiden, so the L of COM is factor V Leiden, and this is essentially a mutant activated factor V that does not respond to the inhibitory effects of protein C. So it kind of acts like a protein C deficiency. The factor V Leiden is a condition where the factor V is more resistant to the inhibitory effects of protein C. This is a common condition. Like antiphospholipid antibody syndrome, factor V Leiden is relatively common in the grand scheme of all of these 
these hypercoagulation conditions. Malignancy is another big one. So malignancy is probably the second most common acquired cause of hypercoagulability. And the malignancies that you want to think about are JAK2 induced myeloproliferative neoplasms or MPNs. Brain tumors also increase the risk of hypercoagulation. Acute Promyelocytic leukemia, or APL, also has an increased risk of hypercoagulability, and mucin secreting adenocarcinomas are also a cancer that increases hypercoagulation as well. So these are the ones that you want to think about. With regards to the H in our mnemonic, HIT, or heparin induced thrombocytopenia, is essentially a condition where the body makes antibodies against platelets after the use of heparin. And that's exactly what this is. So it's heparin induced thrombocytopenia, platelet count drops due to antibodies being produced against those platelets. And this is all due to heparin. And the treatment for that is to actually stop the heparin use. The other H is homocysteinemia or having high levels of homocysteine in the blood. And homocysteinemia can actually increase the risk of venous and arterial thrombi. And conditions where we're going to think about elevated homocysteine are vitamin B12 and folate deficiency. So both vitamin B12 and folate deficiency can elevate our homocysteine levels, causing homocysteinemia. And this can increase the risk of hypercoagulation. So there's other causes of homocysteinemia as well, but these are the two I want you to think about. So the next A in our mnemonic calm apes is for antithrombin deficiency. So this is very easy to remember. Antithrombin inhibits thrombin. So antithrombin inhibits thrombin to stop or slow down coagulation. So if we have a deficiency in antithrombin, well, we're not going to be able to inhibit thrombin as well. So we're going to have increased coagulation. The next cause of hypercoagulability is the condition known as prothrombin G20210A. And what this is, is there's actually a mutation patient in prothrombin that makes it more active. So it increases the activity of prothrombin to produce more thrombin, and that is going to increase the coagulation cascade as well. Another cause is proxismal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, and this is a very rare acquired hematopoietic stem cell disorder. This also increases the risk of venous and arterial thrombi. The E in our mnemonic stands for elevated eighth factor, so increased factor eight. And if we have increased factor eight, well, we're going to have increased coagulation. This is very easy to think about. And the S in our mnemonic stands for protein S deficiency. As we mentioned before, the liver makes both protein S and protein C. Protein S is actually a cofactor with protein C. It helps protein C function. So remember, protein C inhibits both activated factor 5 and activated factor 8 in the coagulation cascade. And protein S is a cofactor with protein C. So if we have a deficiency in protein S, protein C is not going to function as well. So it's not going to be able to inhibit factor 5 and factor 8 as well as it should. And the other S is sticky platelet syndrome. Sticky platelet syndrome is actually an interesting condition and it's actually an autosomal dominant condition that leads to an increased aggregation of platelets in certain circumstances like increased stress. This is a very interesting condition and this is one of the causes we want to think about with regards to hypercoagulability. So those are the causes of hypercoagulability again in more detail and most of these causes induce clots in the veins, but there are certain conditions that cause both arterial and venous clots or arterial and venous thrombi. So which conditions cause arterial clots? So there's only a handful of conditions you want to think about when there are clots in arteries. And we can remember the mnemonic AH PJs. You can think of comfortable PJs, comfy pajamas, AH PJs. So think about pajamas. So A is again for antiphospholipid antibody syndrome. We talked about this before. This actually can cause both arterial and venous clots. The H stands for both HIT and homocysteinemia. Both of these can actually increase the risk of arterial and venous clots. The P stands for proximal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. This is again a cause of both arterial and venous clots. Out of the malignancies, I want you to think about JAK2 induced myeloproliferative neoplasms as a cause of arterial clots. This is notorious for causing clots in arteries. And the last one is S for sticky platelet syndrome. Sticky platelet syndrome can lead to clots in arteries as well. So these are the small subset of causes of hypercoagulability that also cause arterial thrombosis or arterial clots. The other ones that aren't included in this list cause venous clots the majority of the time. So with regards to arterial thrombosis, you want to think about ah, PJs, antiphospholipid antibody syndrome, HIT, 
in homocystinemia, proxismal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, JAK2 induced myeloproliferative neoplasms, and sticky platelet syndrome. These are the hypercoagulable causes of arterial clots. So if you want to learn more about other hematology conditions, please check out my hematology playlist. I have many lessons in that playlist. And if you haven't already, please consider liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell to help support the channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.